The hieroglyphs on the coffin here don't tell you anything about Nesi Kantu. They're all prayers, and they are speeches put in the mouths of the various gods and goddesses that are there, and they're prayers for food offerings. And the most interesting thing about them is what they tell you about Egyptian theology of this period. Because if you tabulate the different gods mentioned in the inscriptions, they seem fairly evenly divided between two, the sun god Raharakti and Osiris god of the dead. And these refer to two different conceptions of eternity. On the one hand, you would identify with the sun, and to be identified with the sun, that means you rise with him in the morning in the east, and you sail with him across the sky and around the earth, because the Egyptians conceived of the sun going over the earth into the west. So we have one conception of eternity. In the night, the sun god travels below the earth, and below the earth rests Osiris, who is the mummy par excellence. So it's a static and enduring conception of the afterlife. And when the sun god travels through the underworld and meets Osiris, it's as though he's recharged with the new energy he needs to be reborn in the mummy. So if you're looking at the way the spells are distributed, you see that these are complementary aspects of eternity, which are part of the beliefs of the ancient Egyptians who lived in Nesikansu's time.